Hey everybody and welcome to the top 5 military surplus rifles under $500 in 2021. I'm Mike B of course and we're doing a little bit different format this year. I don't have my usual long table with just you know focusing on the guns so you don't have to bear with my ugly mug for the duration of this video. Sorry about that but um, <clears throat> it'll, it'll still get the point across. So it's 2021 specifically the end of February right now when I'm making this video. Um, Things in the past year have been interesting to say the least in every regard. Um, firearms and ammunition availability being one of those interesting things. Uh, long story short, ammo is basically gone, non-existent, and if you can find it, it's double, triple, even quadruple the price it was uh, pre-2020 for multiple reasons. I don't want to get into all that stuff, but it seems the whole world is experiencing this kind of shortage on certain things, not just firearms. But anyway... So usually ammo availability is a factor on my ranking system, my loosely based, opinion based, 100% opinion based, not factual, um, grading system, or ranking system rather. This year, let's just say this right out, let's just get this out of the way, all of the calibers for all of the uh, rifles that I'm going to be showing you, um, they're all extremely expensive and extremely hard to find. Now, this year there are going to be some different rifles on this uh, list because things have changed a lot. Some things that have made my lists in the past for being affordable and having historic value and all that stuff, that's the whole point of military surplus, is no longer just about shooting, it's about having the, the history factor too, which is what drives prices up because of supply and demand, etc., etc. Anyway, we'll, keep, we'll, we'll get moving on. So... This year is a very interesting year. It was kind of a challenging thing for me to go through and figure out which ones were under $500 that I like. And uh, man, there's not a lot that are under $500 that are going for. And I also want to preface this with, I do not use Gun Broker as the sole reference for my prices. I look at the average and Gun Broker stuff usually goes for a hell of a premium over a, just a, a face, or, um, sorry, a person-to-person -person transaction or a different auction site, like actual auctions. And uh, local gun stores sometimes have deals and stuff this year. Again, it's very different. So that's what I base my prices on and all that stuff. Your mileage may vary. If you don't know how to find things on the internet because you haven't been doing it as long as I have, you're going to probably disagree with my prices because you're going to say, well, I saw this on Gun Broker for two, twice what you said. Well, there are other places to look that are very vast and there's a lot of people that utilize that and get fairly good deals. All right, all that stuff. I think I covered pretty much everything I needed to cover. Oh, one more thing before we start. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members. See, I don't like doing the whole corporate sponsorship thing. I will do reviews on gear that people, you know, companies want to send me for a review. But I just, I get tired of the whole, like, you know, I want to thank, you know, this company that you really don't care about, but you have to make it look like you care. So that's why I want to keep this channel self and crowdfunded. Um, I can only afford to put so much money into this out of pocket. And, you know, I'm limited on what content I can make. Now, this past year has been really good for uh, more Patreon supporters and channel members. And I've been able to do a lot more really cool content and be able to get things to teach you guys about history and go out and do shooting videos. Ballistic tests, those cost a lot of money. So I'm able to do a lot more of that. We get some really cool stuff lined up for this year, thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members. So, that's the sponsor of the video. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome this year. Again, I keep saying it, it's going to be awesome. We've got a lot of cool stuff planned. So... Now we'll get started. Number five on the list is going to be the Yugoslavian M48 Mauser rifle. So, of course, the history of this thing, you really don't need to know. It's based on the um, FN or the Serbian Model 1924. Just a little bit upgraded, and it was their main service rifle for several years. And was used up until just recently, actually, in um, various capacities and the civil wars that were going on in the Balkans in the 90s and other stuff. These are used as marksman rifles and all that. Anyway... They're also extremely common in the United States, and up until just recently, these were sub $200. I think I did pay $180 for this one in 2015 or 16 as a grade or shooter grade. Good stuff. Recently, though, they've gone up to at least $350 for something that's going to be in this condition for a shooter grade, which is stuff that I like. So it's under $500, but you're going to be looking at more realistically $350 to $450 if you can find one because everybody's hanging on to them that's got them. Now, these do come up, and the 2447 comes up too, but the 2447 not as often. So these are one of the most common Mauser rifles, uh, surplus rifles in the United States, but they're really expensive. That's why, in my personal opinion, I'm ranking this at a 5. It doesn't get higher, because it is a good rifle. It really is. But there are so many of them, I just think people are hanging on to them, and when they do go to sell, 
you know, lack of supply, higher demand, they can command a premium. So that'll be number five on our list, the Yugoslavian M48 Mauser rifle in 8 by 57 millimeter. Number four on our list is one that'll probably surprise you, and it's also surprised me that it hasn't jumped and kind of followed suit with most other surplus rifles, is the Swedish M96 Mauser rifle chambered in 6.5 by 55 Swedish. This is my favorite Mauser variant. I think personally it's the best, if not one of the top three best Mauser platforms ever made. Um, you can disagree with me or whatever, but if you've seen my other videos, you'll understand why I like this thing. So, these, honest to God, haven't really jumped that much. On Gunbroker, yes, but <clears throat> in other auction sites, in, in just person-to-person uh, -person forums, you know, stuff like that, where you're doing legal online sales, collector-to-collector, um, uh, -collector, FFL-to-FFL, FFL, these have been staying around between $300 and $450 for a nicer one. Now, when you get the target sites and all that stuff, all these things, it, it's going to increase the price. It did that before 2020 and 2021. But this has actually remained stable for just a standard infantry rifle version. So I'm actually going to give this a number four spot um, because it is, it is still pretty expensive and they're not nearly as common as they used to be. So number four is going to be the Swedish M96 Mauser rifle. Coming in at number three... Um, it's not made the list before for certain personal boycotting reasons because I didn't agree with the price point. But given the totality of the circumstances in the past year and what's been going on, <sighs> this thing has uh, kind of weaseled its way back into the uh, top five list. So number three on our list is going to be the Mosin Nagant M9130 rifle. Forever these things, obviously, you know, oh, back in my day I could get this for... not going to go into that. But forever, that's, there's millions of these things made, right? And they're obviously, let's be honest, it's nothing against the design, but it's a pretty crude design. It works, it gets the job done, but there are better platforms, you know, more user-friendly, we'll just put it that way. Uh, this is a great platform, but I think there are more user-friendly platforms. So for the price point, the amount made, um, I don't even think now they should be over 200 bucks for just a standard refurbished 9130 like this. But that's my opinion, and given that this past year has proven that Wow, it's really hard to find any surplus firearms, rifles, or pistols under $500. It's, uh, it's going to make the list at number three. So, this is chambered 762 by 54 rimmed, <clears throat> which was a common round until this year. So, again, the ammo situation is going to be relatively the same for all of these. But for a historical factor, 200 and, basically these are going between $175 and $500 for a you know more rare example. And for, so we'll say between 250 and 350 for an example like this. Decent refurbished rifle. That's what they've been going for. I've seen them going for auction sites. Again, not gun broker per se. Um, forums, sales, and all that stuff. And for that price point now to get a piece of World War II history, because like the Swedish Mauser, that doesn't have as much combat, you know, war uh, value as far as history. Everybody wants something that could have been used in combat. But... And I'm not, I'm not knocking the Swedes. I think the Swedish Mauser is great. But uh, anyway, i got to stay on track. So, but this, for 250 bucks to get a 9130 that represents a piece of World War II history, it's a pretty, I don't want to say good deal, but it's, uh, they're staying about the same. These really haven't spiked because I think there's so many of them. So, we'll move on to our number two pick. Coming in at number two, this one usually ranks higher on the uh, top five lists. And it, I just love this thing. You're going to be very surprised. Got knocked down a peg this year. Number two on our list is the Turkish, well, we'll say the M38 for the sake of U.S. collectors. M38 configuration Mauser rifle in 8 by 57 millimeter. This happens to be a model 1903-34 that was converted and all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. But um, any variant of the M38, as we would call it in this configuration, that were updated in the 1930s and then used thereafter. So these things... Uh, absolutely love these. I've not had one that's actually a bad shooter, even with a darker bore that was used a little bit more. And like this one, I just got recently for under 200 bucks shipped from an auction site, an actual auction, but you go on a website and bid on stuff. And yeah, it's got a nice patina on it. It's definitely not pretty, but uh, the stock's got some decent tiger striping, which was a good surprise. And it's a 1903-34. I love the 1903 bolt, the teardrop. So, yeah, these can still be had. Haven't shot this one yet, but I definitely have high hopes for it. And we'll make some videos on that this summer. So, the Turkish M38 Mauser, and they're, they're still going for sub $200 if you get lucky. Haven't seen a lot of those recently. We're looking at more of like three to $450 for a really nice one, $450. Usually about, we'll just say three to $350 for a Turkish Mauser. For a nice Mauser rifle, 
that's really not a bad price at all. These have been staying relatively similar the past, well, I started making these videos, what, five years ago now? Five or six years ago? Or maybe it was longer than that, I don't know. But this has been number one every single year. It's not number one this year because we got another import of some stuff. But uh, we'll get to the number one choice. Number two is the Turkish model, 1938. Before we get to our number one, I just want to do a really quick honorable mention. This one, because of the ammo kind of situation, doesn't really matter this year. We're just talking about mainly historic value and all that stuff and price point. This is one that's finally started really creeping up and getting more expensive. They're not as cheap as they used to be, nor as plentiful because people are hanging on to them. The Japanese Type 99 Arasaka rifle chambered in 77 by 58 millimeter. So these are great rifles, and I've been saying that for years, and so have a lot of other people. But they were always, you know, they have this stigma about them from these older people that just label them Jap crap. That's their term, not mine. I don't think they're crap at all. But uh, people are realizing in the recent years, and now you can get a little bit more ammo for them, that these are actually great shooters. They're great rifles. They were a very strong action, very very uh, solid, very easy to use, accurate rifles, lightweight, and they have a lot of history behind them. These are very hard to get in the rest of the world, for most of the world, because most of them were taken back as war trophies from U.S. troops in the South Pacific, or they were sent to countries like Korea, or stuff like that, or scrapped dumped in the ocean or used, you know, scrap metal. So these are actually kind of hard to find in the rest of the world. I think they're awesome. And yeah, they've been going for like $400, like something just basic plain like this is going to be worth about $400 nowadays. People are like, people are liking them. People want them because the ammo situation doesn't matter. If you can't shoot anything, why, why worry about the ammo? Might as well get one of these before they're gone. So yeah, quick honorable mention, the Japanese Arasaka type 99, this would be number six on the list. Now, our number one choice this year, for multiple different reasons, is something that nobody really cared about or wanted until this past year, and I'm glad to have a few of them because I've been talking the praises of these rifles or singing the praises of these rifles for years, and nobody's really cared about it because they also have a stigma behind them. This year, or last year rather, a bunch of these Carcano Model 1891 Cavalry Carbines and Model TS and Model 9124s and 9128s were imported. I think directly from Italy. Now, these are fantastic rifles if you could find ammo for them. Luckily, last year when these started getting imported, I was like, Hi, I only have a few boxes left. I'm going to grab a, you know, a few hundred rounds just to have because I don't think it's going to be around for a while. I was correct. I also bought a bunch of chargers, got ahead of the game. I already had them, but it was like, well, I'm going to be getting a couple more of these for myself and other people are going to be getting them. So, um, yeah, that's the problem with this is there's no ammo to be had just because there's so many. This would have happened with this caliber, whether this last year would have happened or not, because whenever you flood the market with rifles, you're going to have an ammo shortage, especially when it's in an obscure caliber like this. So that's kind of that kind of is what it is. Now, for historic value, people discount Italy a lot, and it really kind of irritates me because you don't really understand history. If you really want to get into it, Italy was heavily involved in both world wars, like heavily involved, not just a little part, like a little tiny country that... You know, just was maybe involved for a while, and then ah, I'm just kind of a puff of smoke. No, Italy was heavily involved in the First and Second World War, and they used these in both World Wars and thereafter. So this particular one's dated 1894. This is a great thing. These are going for like 230 to 250 bucks on several different primary source sites. I don't know if I can say the names here, but um, DK I think maybe is in the title of one of them, and there's some other places too that are selling these. Um, but yeah, they're two hundred. They're sub three hundred dollars for a Carcano rifle. Now, I would advise if you're going to be getting one of these, enjoy the history of it, learn about it, research it, kind of fall in love with it before you actually want to get ammo and go out and shoot it. Because that way, when you do get ammo, because it will come back, it will be available, you'll appreciate it that much more. These things are really a blast to shoot. No pun intended. But um, the ones that I've had are generally pretty accurate, and they're very user friendly. Minus the chargers. Or the end blocks, those can be finicky, but it's not the rifle's fault, it's the end block's fault. Anyway, number one on our list this year is going to be the Carcano Model 1891 Cavalry Carbine, or any of the other listed carbines, but mainly this one, because this was, seems to be the bulk of the import. Very interesting that this thing knocked the Turkish Mauser off of my usual first place position. So, let me know what you think. I think these are fantastic, and I'm glad that more people are getting on board with them. They're pretty interesting rifles, and luckily they have one from 1894 now, and then there was one from 1917. So, it's a crap shoot, but uh, yeah, and it's pretty fun to play with the bayonet. Look at that. <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. I'm glad you have made this video. I almost forgot to make it. 
I will be trying to do a top five surplus pistols for under 500, but that is really difficult uh, this year. So I might have to like raise the threshold. I don't know. I think generally surplus collecting is as a hobby is, is generally over unless you have really deep pockets, which I don't. My collecting has slowed down significantly in the past few years. It's just not as fun as it used to be because of the demand going up and people panic buying stuff. And I don't know. I just, I don't know if there's much more in the actual hobby of people being able to collect and enjoy these things out at the range, but who am I? Anyway, thank you for watching everybody and we'll see you on the next video.